by Sri Lanka's best internet package for online learning and online working with many amazing offers. Call 1212 for more information. Sri Lanka Telecom. Lenka, tu kuma wedi karaga ne? Lao ju rupyal panha tadu kala. Mama, en api te ekak bom. Tonight, no time to rest. Lankapura office assistant tests COVID-19 positive as health authorities rush to contain any possible threat of spread. In the know, former state intelligence director tells East Commission of National Security Council's prior knowledge of Zaharan threat. The lengths they go to, drug delivering bird of prey uncovered by police as the latest brainchild of underworld racketeers. The best of the best. Sri Lanka's national debating team inch closer to World Schools debating title with crushing win over Ireland. All this and much more coming up on this Thursday, the 30th July 2020. Nava Sunlight Sakura. Then Dikukal Pavatina Sakura Malsuandin. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana first at nine. Live. From Studio 24 in Colombo. And a warm welcome. This is First at Nine on Other Derana 24, and I'm Indi Variamwatha. Here's a look at your top stories tonight. A staff assistant of the Lankapura Divisional Secretariat um, has been diagnosed with COVID 19. According to the health authorities, the infected patient is a distant associate of a COVID 19 carrier connected to the Kandakadu cluster. Uh, locations believed to have been visited by the patient were shut down and subjected to disinfection throughout the day today, while family members of the patient were also quarantined. An office assistant employed at the Lankapura Divisional Secretariat in Polunarwa was diagnosed with COVID-19 yesterday. The diagnosis was made after PCR tests were conducted on all staff at the Lankapura Divisional Secretariat on Tuesday the 28th. The PCR tests were carried out due to a staff member of the same Divisional Secretariat being diagnosed with the virus on the 16th of July while in quarantine. He's an associate of an infected patient from the Kandakadu cluster. It is now suspected that the patient identified yesterday contracted the virus through the other infected person. However, the Lankapura Office of the Medical Officer of Health had identified the recently infected person as one of his most distant associates. According to health authorities, the infected person identified yesterday had shown no symptoms of COVID-19. After receiving the PCR results, the patient was admitted to the Polunarvo Hospital last night and was transferred to the Infectious Diseases Hospital today. Public services at the Divisional Secretariat were halted following the diagnosis. In the meantime, the disinfected Divisional Secretariat will be kept open only for essential activities. Meanwhile, steps were taken to close down and disinfect the Lankapura branch of a state bank and the Lankapura Central Ayurvedic Dispensary due to the infected patient having visited the locations. Three family members of the infected, who is a resident of Talpota in Lankapura, have already been referred to the Poonani Quarantine Centre. In the meantime, with fresh cases being detected, health authorities now place the country's total number of COVID-19 patients since the outbreak began at 2,814. Further, the recovery of 16 more patients has served to reduce the number of active cases to 470. Salem Bank, the bank with a heart. Former State Intelligence Service Director Nilantha Jawadana told the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the Easter Sunday attacks that information on the activities and the public threat posed by the National Tawi Jamaat ringleader Zaharan Hashim had been communicated to the National Security Council a year before the attacks took place. The former intelligence chief made these revelations during the fourth day of his testimony at the commission that took place today. 
Former State Intelligence Service Director Senior DIG Nilanta Jayavardhana testified for the third consecutive day yesterday where he presented an intelligence document that he had shared on 20th July 2015 with Senior DIG Nandana Munasinghe, who was then in charge of the Criminal Investigation Department and the Traffic Police. The document had highlighted an increase in law college enrollment of Muslim students up to 78 in 2012 from 5 in 2003. These numbers accounted for an enrollment quota for Muslim students of 25.24% in 2012 from 2.4% in 2003. He added that he had taken the issue up with both the Sri Lanka Law College and the Ministry of Justice at the time. The Commission then asked the witness to expand on the reason for such an increase. The witness responded that he had attributed the increase to expansionism and a struggle between minorities and the majority. The Commission was also told that in 2013, the All Ceylon Jamiatul Ulama had issued halal certification to 4,500 products from 204 companies, which earned them monthly revenue of 1.5 million rupees. Meanwhile, senior DIG Nilanta Jayavadra's testimony resumed today for the fourth day. At the outset, the witness told the Commission that towards the end of 2018, he had written to IGP Pujit Jasundara at the time, bringing to his attention an increase in attacks on places of religious worship in the Sabargama, northwestern and central provinces. Further, the witness stated that he had also informed both the IGP and the Defence Secretary of sermons conducted by Zaram Hashim on Sundays at the Kartankuri branch of the National Tawhid Jamaat, where he called for Sri Lanka to be converted into an Islamic state. When the witness was questioned as to why such a development was not made public, the witness responded that he had done so in order to prevent communal clashes. Further, he stated that there were certain complications in working with a government that consisted of two distinctly different political parties. He added that the National Security Council was kept abreast of all of Zaharan Hashim's activities during that time. The witness also revealed that in 2017, on the instructions of the Defence Secretary, extra security had been provided to the US Embassy and the Indian High Commission in Colombo due to ISIS attack threats against the targets. In response to this statement, the Commission then asked the witness why was it that he had taken immediate action for the safety of foreign missions due to ISIS threats, but only acted to share a warning document when public safety was at risk. The witness responded that he had issued warnings to all authorities responsible for public safety of the threat posed by Zaran Hashim as far back as a year before the attacks, including providing them with information on exact locations of the suspects. Further, he revealed that lists of individuals engaged in extremist acts had been provided to the authorities including 94 in 2017 and another 130 in 2018. Senior DIG Nilanta Jayavardhana also stated that unlike in the past when the STF and TID were under the State Intelligence Service, during his tenure as SIS chief, they were unable to carry out search and arrest operations at the time. Now, in a startling uh, evidence uh, of the lengths the drug racketeers will go to in order to carry out the illegal trade, the Athrugiriya police today discovered an eagle that they believe may have been used to transport drugs in an operation run by drug kingpin Anguda Lukka. According to police, the bird of prey used by the underworld leader had been smuggled into the country by sea. In other developments, two seafarers, uh, staffers of the Kalaniya Pradesh Sabha and the Kolonava Divisional Secretariat were arrested by the police today while transporting crystal methamphetamine. According to information received by Western Province intelligence officials, Aturugiriya police today uncovered an eagle suspected to have been used by drug lord Angoda Lokka as a carrier to smuggle drugs. The carrier sea eagle was found in the Navalamulla area of Megoda. Police were also able to arrest two close associates of the underworld drug kingpin. Identified as a white-bellied sea eagle, these birds of prey are supposed to be capable of carrying over two kilograms during flight. According to wildlife officials, this type of sea eagle can be trained to obey human commands. An air rifle was also discovered during the raid and the sea eagle was handed over to the Department of Wildlife. <laughs> In other developments, two officials from the Kalaniya Pradesh Sabaha and Kolunnava District Secretariat were arrested while transporting 250 grams of crystal methamphetamine, also known as ICE. The duo was apprehended at Patia Junction in Paliagoda. Meanwhile, prison officials discovered four mobile phones that were hurled over the Nigambu prison wall today. Meanwhile, at the Mahara prison, prison officials today uncovered two mobile phones, a packet of cigarettes, tobacco, heroin, intoxicant pills and a lighter thrown into the prison. 
Meanwhile, the former superintendent of the Nigambo prison, Anuruddha Sampayo, who is accused of providing illegal facilities to inmates, is on the loose for the eighth consecutive day, despite a warrant against his name. In the meantime, the Criminal Investigation Department today questioned Sampayo's siblings as the former prison official remains at large. With between 8 and 9,000 Sri Lankan migrant workers having lost their jobs as a result of COVID-19 pandemic in the Middle East, the Sri Lankan Bureau of Foreign Affairs or Foreign Employment said that steps are being taken in uh, coordination with the Sri Lankan missions to find alternative employment for those stranded. Speaking to First at Nine, Deputy General Manager and Spokesperson of the Sri Lanka Bureau of Foreign Employment, Mangala Randhaniya, said that additionally, the Bureau has also initiated programs to provide its fullest cooperation to the government in repatriating Sri Lankans, including financially assisting them to purchase airline tickets and volunteer the Bureau's training centres as quarantine centres. Deputy General Manager and Spokesperson of the Sri Lanka Bureau of Foreign Employment, Mangala Randhaniya says that around 8,000 to 9,000 Sri Lankan migrant workers have lost their jobs due to the COVID-19 pandemic. He added that SLB, FE and Embassy staff are currently implementing measures to assist these stricken workers in sourcing employment opportunities with 15,000 Sri Lankans currently under the Bureau's care. By now, up to 8,000 to 9,000 people have lost their jobs due to COVID-19 situation. The most important factor of this situation is that the embassy staff of SLBFE uh, under the supervision of the ambassadors are making efforts to re-employ them uh, in different places. The discussions being taken place, especially in Qatar, the Qatar the embassy staff has made several uh, initiatives with new employers where these uh, jobs uh, employees can be employed and the progress is of course positive. The other countries also are uh, making the same effort in order to ensure the re-employment of job lost Sri Lankan. The second factor is by now more than 15,000 of Sri Lankan workers have been looked after by the Bureau of Foreign Employment through the mission by providing them the dry rations and sanitary items. Randhania also stated that the Bureau stands willing to allocate their resources and aid in the repatriation of migrant workers. Sri Lanka Bureau of Foreign Employment has informed the authorities of repatriation of Sri Lankans that the Bureau, Bureau is ready to allocate its resources for repatriation activities such as uh, providing uh, funds for the for ticket costs, those who are not in a position to buy tickets. Yeah. And also, our residential training centres can be allocated as quarantine centres for the migrant workers. In the meantime, taking to Twitter, the Centre for Government Communication in Kuwait announced that they will allow Kuwaiti citizens and residents to travel to and from the country, except for residents of Sri Lanka, India, Philippines, Bangladesh, Nepal, Iran and Pakistan from the 1st of August. The Colombo Crimes Division raided a high-tech illegal distillery operated under the uh, guise of a vehicle garage in Kalutara yesterday. Police arrested nine suspects at the location, seized high-tech distillation equipment, along with over a thousand bottles of uh, bot bootlegged alcohol set for public sale. Further, 4,000 litres of illegally manufactured ethanol were also taken into custody, which police sources say were distributed to other illegal distilleries. The Colombo Crimes Division raided an illegal ethanol distillery operated in the area of Hinatiangala in the Karutari district yesterday. Nine suspects, including four females, were arrested during the raid. Police also discovered advanced equipment used for alcohol distilling along with more than 1,000 bottles of illegally produced liquor. 4,000 litres of ethanol were also taken into custody during the raid. In the meantime, Western Province Senior DIG Deshabandu Tenakun also arrived at the raided distillery for an inspection. 
मैं स्थान पर शकर पहाड़ में शाल इस तागारे के आवश्यक करना सीलों को अंगों पर आंगों पकार रहती है ना देवदेशी राम मिल दी अरग ने ये रावलिंग इतने उन नीति विरोधी निष्पादन कर ला इतने उन लास्ट इतने आवश्यक रसायन के द्वारा यो दला रखो निष्पादन करी में कर लेती है ना ये वाके में लोरी के पेटो शाल इतने उन प्रमाण यक्ति ना विश्वास करने समार ले में स्थाने निष्पादन करना अतिरिक्त इतने उन में प्रदेशी हो बनात प्रदेश वर्ती नीति रोजी रस ये वाके रखो निष्पादन करने स्थानों टे विधायकर Former director of the Criminal Investigations Department, SSP Shani Abesekara, has withdrawn his fundamental rights petition, challenging the decision taken by the National Police Commission to suspend and transfer him following the presidential election of 2019. The attorney representing the former CID director told the court that his client does not wish to proceed with the FR petition in question as another FR petition concerning the matter has already been filed with the Supreme Court. In his petition, SSP Abe Sekera alleged that following the presidential election held last year, he was removed from the directorship of the CID without a valid reason and transferred as the personal assistant to the Southern Province DIG. SSP Abe Sekera also noted that he was stripped of the special security detail given to him due to the threats to his life. Accepting the request for the withdrawal, the Supreme Court bench ordered the FR petition to be revoked. And Sri Lankan debaters are eligible for the finals. We'll talk about that when we return. Enjoy a very smooth shave with the Big Easy 2 razor. Big Easy 2. President Gotabe Rajapaksa attending a series of campaign rallies in support of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna candidates in the Gampaha and Kalutara districts yesterday and today. President Gotabe Rajapaksa participated in election campaign rallies organized in support of Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumana candidates contesting from the Gampa district today. The head of state first attended a rally organized in support of the Gampa district candidate Sisera Jaikodi at the Kalania bus stand. <laughs> The president then made an appearance at a rally in support of SLPB candidate Nimal Lanza at the Lewis Place grounds in Nigambo. In the meantime, Gampa district candidate Prasanna Ranthunga also held an election rally at the weekly fair in Udugampula that the president also attended. <laughs> The head of state then attended a rally organized by Dr. Nalaka Godeheva at the Jaya bus stand. At the event, Dr. Godeheva presented his 10-point policy framework to the president. Meanwhile, President Gotabe Rajapaksa also participated in election propaganda events organized in support of the candidates of the Kalutara district yesterday. Accordingly, the president arrived at a gathering organized at the weekly fair premises in Horana and endorsed candidate Vidura Vikram Nayaka. The head of state then made an appearance at an event organized in support of Karutara district candidate Jayanta Samaravira in Korosduva Vadva. The president later stopped by at an event in support of Karutara district candidate Pial Nishanta De Silva held at the Beruala Pradesh Sabha of his premises. <laughs> President Gotabia next arrived at an election campaign rally held near the Kalutara railway station. <laughs> 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 
Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa told the crowds at a rally in Navalapitiya today that the public needs no introduction to how UNP ministers utilize ministerial funds given allegations against Samarki Janabalavegya leader Sajid Premadasa on charges of misappropriating 11 billion rupees from the Central Cultural Fund. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa took part in an election rally in Navalapitiya today in support of candidate district candidate Mahinda Nanda Arudgamage. ඔන්හිට in the meantime, the Premier also participated in an election rally in Doluba in Kandy in support of Kandy district candidate Anuradha Jayaratna. Ganimatawashi <laughs> Now, the United National Party leader, Ranul Wickremesinghe, urged UNP supporters to recognize the difference between the Samagi Janabalavege and real UNPers, warning the public that voting for a party consisting of coalition leftovers would be the same as voting for either the JVP or the SLPP. He added that more action will be taken against former UNP members and parliamentarians attempting to destroy the party. United National Party leader Ranil Vikramasinghe headlined an election campaign rally held at Torrington Avenue in Colombo yesterday. ඒක <laughs> Samagi Janabalavegya leader Sajid Premadasa accused the SLPP and the UNP of teaming up against him in a coordinated mudslinging campaign. The former opposition leader responded to charges leveled at him by a committee appointed to probe misappropriation of a staggering 11 billion rupees from the Central Cultural Fund during his tenure as the subject minister. He made these comments when he addressed crowds at a campaign event held in Colombo yesterday. Samagi Janabalavegi leader Sajid Premadasa took part in an election campaign rally at the Campbell Park in Borella yesterday. Then Pohotu, Ape Bengurute Kahuila, then Patangarantino, Via Paria, Apita Madagand, Sali Avavita Karal, Mitavuni, Mama Mage Amatian Sente Ura Pilane, Mama Paratakami Vadagrande, the Lavavavita Karal, Au the Kiane, Tom Pacha Horunge Dute Kotase, Mama Kiana Kamati, Mama Niama Prema Dasa Kinikpake Lassi, O Namacho the Nakatamuna Denda, Prema Dasa Lakava that Vatin Lamitruni. Anivarin Satya Kavada Ho Jagani. Mama Kamara Kasi in the Gena. Prabhu Deshapal Negana Budgalik Neme. Api Nehamada Matamun Nansela Tik. Apita Tamun Nansela Dakinagota Putuma Shaktiya Kangatin.
And we have some very good news. Sri Lanka's national debate team has cruised through to the finals of the World Schools Debating Championship, set to be worked off on Sunday, the 2nd of August, against the other finalist, Canada. The team, made up of Shalen Sumandran and Janul De Silva from Royal College Colombo, Jasmine Markhandu and Rahul De Silva from Colombo International School, and Chanidu Ratnayaka from Ananda College, reached the finals after defeating Ireland in the semi-final yesterday on a 7-0 decision. The World Schools Debating Championship is considered the World Cup of English Debating, with 68 countries participating this year in an online version of the event, which is scheduled to be held in Mexico, but was changed due to coronavirus risks. The team is coached by Kitmina Hebage and Sanjit Dias. And we take a short break to return with more news. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka announced the issuing of Treasury bills amounting to 39.5 billion rupees at an auction held yesterday. In addition, a further 115 billion rupees of Treasury bonds were also issued today, with the Central Bank announcing that it will accept any amount of bids not exceeding the issued amounts. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka decided to issue Treasury bills to the tune of 39.5 billion rupees yesterday. The Central Bank's Public Debt Department stated that the bank that this will include 9 billion rupees in 3-month Treasury bills, 6 billion rupees in 6-month Treasury bills, and 24.5 billion rupees in 12-month Treasury bills. Further, the Public Debt Department of the Central Bank has also announced the issue of 110 billion rupees in Treasury bonds through an auction held today. Accordingly, this will include 45 billion rupees in Treasury bonds under the 5.75% 2022 A series, 35 billion rupees in Treasury bonds under the 9% 2026 A series, and 30 billion rupees in Treasury bonds under the 7.8% 2027 A series. Moreover, the central bank has decided to accept any amount not exceeding the amount offered, depending on the market conditions for the series offered. Sri Lankan shares edged lower for a third straight session today, dragged down by losses in communication services stocks. The benchmark CSC All Share Price Index closed 0.12% lower, while the S&P SL20 Index of more liquid stocks fell 0.45%. Market turnover was 1.06 billion rupees, with 48 stocks making gains and 90 showing losses. Here's a brief market report. Decline in the company earning drop in the John Keys high blue chip counter fueled the fall in the market for third consecutive session. And turnover record above 1 billion on the back of Commercial Bank, which contributed 29% of the total turnover. And within the last few minutes of the trades, market spiked and closed at 5,088 points, losing 6 points. And today we saw the net foreign outflow from the selling side. We feel the market in the coming days also will have a less market activity due to the lack of confidence in the market. Now the Sri Lankan rupee closed stronger at 185 rupees and 62 to 70 cents against the US dollar in the spot market today, while bond yields edged up. However, the rupee closed at 185.68 to 78 against the greenback yesterday. Here's a look at how the rupee traded against other major currencies of the day. And that wraps up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Thank you for watching. Have a pleasant evening.